Hello everybody, it's me, Oliver, your local T-boy from Missouri, um, and I'm here to give you guys some updates on the situation. Honestly, uh, I've been gone for a little bit because getting genocided sure is stressful, and, and I know I sound like I'm being fucking facetious, but um, that is what is happening to us now. I'm not going to mince words. Um, if you've been paying any kind of attention at all, Trans people are now being inundated with attacks on our well-being. It's snowballing. It is escalating. It is going to continue to get worse before it gets better. I want to make that very clear. I've heard some trans people say, like, oh, we've been worse. We've been through worse before. Like, people didn't even know that trans people existed, really, until, like, 2015. And, like... Okay, the invisibility did not actually grant us any kind of safety, but it also was not an intentional fixated attack on us as human beings. I mean, even though there were not systems in place to help us, even though a lot of people did not know that we existed and therefore did not support us, um, that invisibility was not safety. That was neglect. Like, systematic neglect of a people and now instead of the neglect we are having systems put in place to intentionally harm us and to make us disappear to make it difficult for us to exist in public to make it difficult for us to have jobs to make it unreasonably difficult to keep our own goddamn bodies healthy inside of our own houses so that's the first thing that i wanted to make clear in this video is that this is not really a victory. This is the can being kicked down the road. This is going to be maybe a little bit of respite for some people. This is going to give some of us a little bit more time to take care of some things that we need to take care of, to stock up on medication, to get surgeries that we already had scheduled that were going to get canceled. I just want to make it crystal clear to anybody, anybody who is listening to this that it is not safe here. It is not going to stay as safe as it is now. It is going to continue to get worse. In Missouri right now, there are at least 40 anti-LGBT bills that are active presently. I say at least 40 because on this list, there was a bill that wasn't included. SB 14 is in committee, and if it is passed, it is going to prevent trans people from being able to amend our birth certificates. Because we are trans. Because they want to make our lives harder. Do you know what this does to us? If trans people have birth certificates that are not amended, what kind of documentations do people ask when you get a job? Birth certificates are commonly one of the valid forms of ID that are used in the employment process. It opens us up for more discrimination and more mistreatment. That is the purpose of this bill. There is no other reason to do this. Who does this help? Who does this save? What victim is being protected by this? No one. This is only intended to harm trans people. And so actually, on Tuesday, I'm representing myself in court to have my gender formally recognized. In Missouri, it is already very prohibitive to have your birth certificate amended as a trans person. <sighs> Currently, in order to have your birth certificate amended, you have to get a notarized letter from a doctor that states that you have had a sex-changing procedure. And then you have to go to court, and you have to pay the court fees, and then if the judge formally recognizes your gender, then you've got to do more goddamn paperwork. you got to send shit in the mail to the vital... the Bureau of Vital Records, okay? This is already hard. This is already hard enough. 
to get done. And they are going to take this option away from us completely. So if you're a trans person who's living in Missouri right now and you don't want your birth certificate to have your dead name and the wrong gender on it forever, then you're, you're going to want to start getting this process underway because um, you might not have... You might not have the opportunity anymore. At least 40 active anti-LGBT bills in Missouri right now. One of them is called the SAFE Act. Save adolescents from experimentation. That's what they decided to call it. Um, let's see, 419. I believe that is one that we are expected to likely pass very soon. Uh, and it is going to cause trans kids to die. That is what bills like these are going to do. So now I'm going to get to the good news, which is that the emergency rule that would uh, remove trans care for a whole lot of adults in Missouri has been put on pause there is a uh, temporary restraining order that has been put on the bill that uh, makes it so that it will not take effect until July 24th or until the judge rules on whether to grant a preliminary injunction, meaning that um, it could be pushed back even further. And there is also the potential for uh, the rule to receive a permanent injunction, meaning that it would be effectively paused indefinitely and that you know i thought that that would likely be the outcome um and and it probably will be i'm still hoping for that um and july 24th that gives people a little bit of time to pick up the medications that they need to stock up on it gives people a little bit more time. When the AG issued this emergency rule, he said, I am going to have this take effect two weeks from today. That that wasn't a lot of time for people to prepare, obviously. Um, but now, I want you guys to be asking for 90-day refills on your medications. You guys need to be doing that. You have some time now. <sighs> I need y'all to be thinking about backup plans in case your medication is taken away from you. And if there is a surgery that you would like to get done, and it's only going to be realistic for you to get that done in Missouri, you're going to need to schedule that immediately. And you're going to need to schedule that knowing that your surgery could be taken away from you because you are trans. For no other reason except for that you are trans. Um, something that I want you guys to think about is that when a cis woman has a hysterectomy, if she has her ovaries removed and she needs to be on estrogen replacement therapy, it's probably a little bit scary, you know? Access to uh, insurance and money and uh, going to the pharmacy and taking meds every day. It's a little bit inconvenient. It's kind of a lot for anybody deal to deal with, really. But um, you know what they don't have to fucking deal with? They don't have to deal with the fact that their legislators are trying to remove their fucking medication from them. They don't have to... Huh, imagine having, like, ovarian cancer or something, and you have to get your ovaries removed, and you're a cis woman, you think, man... That really sucks. I'm going to have to be on estrogen for the rest of my life in order to keep my body healthy, in order to not get osteoporosis and, and my body to break down and for me to fucking die early. A little bit inconvenient, a little bit expensive perhaps for some people, um, but they can live with it. And for me, I saw that Roe was coming. I saw that the over, overturning of Roe was coming, and I hate being right. But I was right, and I sped up my hysterectomy, and I got my hysterectomy last summer, a month after Roe was overturned. And you know, a decision that I had to make was because there was something else I saw coming. I saw that my access to testosterone 
would be precarious. And so I had to make the decision that cis people don't have to make, which is, do I want to keep my sex producing gonads as a backup in case my legislators take my fucking sex hormones away from me? That's something that cis women removing their ovaries don't have to think about. But that is a decision that I had to make. I kept my ovaries. I didn't want them. Do you know what my ovaries will do if I lose access to testosterone? They will start producing estrogen again. And my body fat will redistribute to an hourglass shape. My body and my face will start looking the way that they did when I tried to kill myself. And so I had to decide, do I want that to happen to me? Or do I want to have no sex hormones in my body and just suffer and disintegrate and die early? Like, what do, what do I want to do? It's a really hard decision for a person to make, as you might imagine. I think a lot of cis people don't understand the gravity of what can happen to me and people like me, what can happen to my little family. It's just me and my girlfriend are both trans, my mother-in-law is trans, a lot of my best friends are trans. Um, living here in Missouri, and we're not safe, and it, huh, I just wish that we could be safe. I just wish they could fucking leave us alone, and that's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen for a few years, and I don't know how bad it's gonna get. As of right now, um, I don't know how bad it's gonna get. Very few people now, I think, are reporting honestly about the situation, or even just citizens, I think, are not grasping the seriousness of what is happening to trans people in the U.S. right now. People call it alarmism when they use the word genocide, but um, I just think it's honest. That's honest. If you're not sounding like an alarmist, you don't understand what's going on. What I want you guys to walk away knowing today, after seeing this video, is that while the emergency rule introduced by the AG, at this point, has been the most extreme and unprecedented restriction that was going to be implemented on trans people, trans adults, in the United States. And while that is likely going to receive a permanent injunction, things are not okay. Things are not safe. If you live in a red state, you need an escape plan. If you are in a red state, if you can ration your medications and try to find ways to pick up extras and save those up and store them somewhere safe, If you can hurry and get all of your IDs changed as quickly as you can, I think that would probably be a good idea. Most of all, if you can get out of a red state, if you can move somewhere, please do. You know, this is a life or death situation. I just want you to take this seriously, deadly seriously. This is a deadly situation. I've seen a lot of you guys in my comment section who live outside of a red state, people who are in safer areas, who are feeling helpless, but who want to help, and they're asking, what can I do? And what I think people, trans people in red states right now need the most is we need a way to get out. So if there is any way that you can communicate with your local LGBT organization, or other queer people and allies in your area, if you can start working on something similar to, like, the 
the anti-network to give people temporary housing as they are fleeing red states. That would do a lot. I actually had some people reaching out to me after the Missouri AG's rule was implemented, um, or whenever it was first issued. And um, I had people telling me I live in X blue state and I could probably let you and your girlfriend crash, crash on my couch for a little while until you find your own place. And that is what that is what we really need right now. So, you know, side note, like, I, like I've said in previous videos, like reach out to your community because there are people who care about you, who will help you, who haven't even met you. Get your passport updated, by the way. If you don't have a passport, you should have an, a passport. If your passport has your dead name on it and a really old picture on it, uh, time to update your passport. We don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know how bad it's gonna get, but you should try to be prepared. And that's all I can say about the subject today without losing my mind. Um, I'm already really stressed out, even without talking about it. So I um, hope this was helpful to you guys. Please take this stuff seriously, and I will see you next time.